Good afternoon. Welcome to uh, OpenStack Rebound Back. I only have 10 minutes, so we got started. My name is Anthony Chow. Containers. Containers is a hot topic. Everyone is talking about containers. You can see it from uh, trade magazines, blog posts, and then people, even in conferences, people are all talking about containers. Most importantly, will your boss be the next one talk asking you to spin up some container, or do you want to get into the uh, container business so you can get more money or get a better job? Look at the pretty landscape. It's very pretty, but if you stare on it for a longer time, you will get overwhelmed. Well, trust me, you don't have time to stare at it too long, but trust me, you will get overwhelmed. And so is the container landscape. It is very full. I picked this up from the internet. This is, I believe, is one of the articles in Wikibon where they talk about container, um, container ecosystems. This one is a little bit better because it's more Docker specific. Which brings up a point, uh, just like Xerox machine, actually it's a copy machine, but Xerox is so, so popular that people call that copy machine a Xerox machine. Same thing as container. People equate container and dockers are the same. And because of the time limit, today I'm not going to, um, I can, this is one objective that I'm trying to do well. Being in Texas, I couldn't resist to put this slide as, as an illustration. What I can do today is just to slice up the, the stick. You have to go back and to digest and to, and to learn more about container. I cannot simply talk about container in 10 minutes. Like I said, container, that Docker is not the only container technology. Back in year 2000, we already have FreeBSD and Google has its own version of container and they have been using this for such a long time. And they're very good at using uh, container. Kubernetes is part of the orchestration tool developed by Google. And LXE is part of Linux. Docker, I like the slogan very much. It's build, ship, and run. This is exactly how a container is supposed to be. And like I said, because of time, I just want to go through some Docker specific instead of because there's too, too, too many containers, uh, things we can talk about. These are the three things that make container works. The namespace, the C group, and the uniform SF. Namespace is how one container look at the resource. The PID, ID, the, the network, the, the, the mount system, all these things. And C group is to control the resource that can be used by a container. Uniform SF is how a container is built on top of one another. This is basically the, how container uh, dockers work. If you see this one, usually we have a base container. Uh, and Docker is recently moving from Ubuntu to uh, Alpine Linux. And then with a base container, you create a Docker file. That's where you want to uh, build a container. And then after, after what you want to build, it becomes a Docker image and you can run it. You can uh, build, ship, uh, run, build, uh, and ship everywhere. And then after that, you can put it in the registry where you can check out just like a library. You don't have to build it again. And these are some of the registry that you can store container images. Uh, container runtime, I believe this is the most confusing one because Core OS used to be working with, with Dockers, but then they have a different idea of how con a container should be, so they're separate. And yet, Core OS will still support Dockers. Um, so this is, for us, sometimes if you will look at the container arena, this is a little bit confusing. And if you look at these, these things, these are called the Linux distribution that are optimized to run containers. And you can see Microsoft is very big on containers too. You can see the Microsoft uh, Server 2000, the Nano Server, or even Windows 10 with Hyper-V, you can have container support. Well. All that's all being said, fortunately for us it has, as the industry, there is a Cloud Native Computing Foundation where they have the Open Container Initiative. They're trying to consolidate the, the, the specification so that the whole industry using one specific runtime specification and one specific image from, uh, format specification. I believe the latest Docker uh, release supports the OCI runtime specification. Service Directory. Service discovery. 
instead of going through, this is one of the aspects that we need to know when we look into container. Uh, the, one of the best application for container is microservices. Instead of one monolithic application, microservices spawn up different containers and they need to talk to each other because they work. Uh, for example, if you go to uh, Amazon.com to buy some stuff, uh, microservices is working for you at this time. Um, because of the nature of microservices, service discovery is very important because of when a container spun up, we need to talk. We need to know where my core um, peer container is, and this is what we, we, is important. And uh, service discovery is nothing more than a distributed key value store. And these are some of the common discovery. Um, yesterday, I came flew in from uh, into Austin Airport. We were uh, trying to take the hundred bus to come go to the hotel. We were looking at the. the um, Schedule and also the destination where we should we get off all of a sudden a guy. I think he, he works for Red Hat He's wearing an SC uh, T-shirt SCD t-shirt and I make a lousy joke I say oh we should all listen to him because he is service discovery anyway so much for a lousy joke <laughs> the, the next thing is networking networking is important because of the specific nature of containers uh, we are seeing lots of endpoints. They need to talk to each other and the network should be able to provide multi-tenancy for isolations. Um, in, lip, in Docker's revision 1.9, we have a major breakthrough is that there is something called the lib network. What it does is it's able to provide interface for external third-party vendors to provide networking solutions for container and this is a big thing. And there's this, these are some of the other alternatives. Most of them, the users overlay. But this is something we need to look at when we look at container networking. And of course, for security. Security is an important aspect. People say, oh, before uh, Docker's con container run as root. And this is major no-no. And then uh, I think, believe, recently that's been changed. It's not running as root anymore. And people have been working so hard to get uh, stock container security to be working so that it will be enterprise ready. This is, this is some of the uh, things that we security use. I think micro segmentation is the best solution. Last time at the VMware I talked about micro segmentation is the best uh, solution for microservices because they provide a fine-tuned uh, the uh, fine-tuned firewall to, to protect the, the talking to, to between the containers. And we can see VMware and Cisco all provide, both provide micro segmenta uh, segmentation solutions. Storage, there are two kinds of containers. One is the stateless and one is the stateful. Uh, by default, the storage goes with the container. When the container goes away, storage goes away. Uh, but some of the application, you need persistent storage. And this is uh, people is working on the Docker volume driver where you can map your container to external uh, storage device so your data can be kept. And then there's also Flocker. They are also preaching that they are be able to provide, um, provide the persistent storage. The next thing, the big thing is orchestration. The first line is I wrote on Twitter. To deploy a container is one thing, it's simple. If you go to do the Hello World container, you can do it in a few, a few seconds or within, within a minute. But to architect a container solution is not that simple. So we need an orchestration tool. And these are some of the orchestration tool that is in the, in the landscape. Of course, this is OpenStack. We need to talk about how OpenStack and container work together. Of course, you will uh, be, you, you hear about a, uh, Project Magnum, where there was a, a um, th the big thing is that the container orchestration engine, so that you will provide interface through OpenStack, you can orchestrate an entire August, uh, container system. The next thing is Project Cola. This is another way of, in, in essence, this is to run OpenStack service as a container. And then there is pro Project um, Curry. As you can see from the picture, this is just an interface between the network. This is the lib network coming into place again, just to provide the interface, and then it's con talk to Neutron. Okay, I don't know how many of you talk, heard about this Dragonfly. 
This is a subsystem of neutron. At this time, there's nothing to do with container, but why do I put it here? But if you look at it carefully, in the roadmap of this project, containers is part of it. So what's next? Container is here to stay. You cannot get away from it. But it's not certain. It's not a replacement for, for, for VMs. So we need to embrace the technology. And then we, I hope this little talk, 10 minutes, will give you started and look into the technology. Thank you for coming. And have a joyful and fruitful conference. Thank you.